In this video, we're going to take a look at pyridine and parole, two very important and prototypical and highly instructive examples of aromatic heterocycles that differ profoundly in their electron density at their carbon atoms. Let's start with pyridine. Pyridine is a six-membered ring containing a nitrogen atom, specifically an N2 nitrogen right here within the ring. That's pyridine. And pyridine is an example of an electron poor or electron deficient heterocycle. And we can trace this to the N2 nitrogen atom. To see what we mean by electron poor, we're going to look at resonance structures and the pi orbital energies of pyridine. So first, let's think about resonance in this molecule. The molecule contains a CN double bond, and nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. So we could imagine pushing the nitrogen-carbon double bond electrons up to nitrogen, and this would generate a resonance structure with negative charge on nitrogen and positive charge on carbon. That positive charge is further delocalized since it's adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond. So we could push, for example, these electrons over and shift the positive charge two carbons over to this position. We could do that one more time since this positive charge is now also adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond, shifting the charge over to more carbons and positioning it here. What these resonance structures show us is that those three carbons in particular that end up with positive charge here, here, and here are pretty electron deficient. They're electrophilic, for example. So I'm going to highlight them in blue. And these resonance forms show us that in pyridine, these positions that are ortho and para, we might say, to the nitrogen atom are particularly electron deficient or electrophilic. Now, we also see manifestations of the electron poor nature of pyridine in the pi molecular orbital energies in particular. They're lower than the pi molecular orbitals of benzene. And I won't show this, for example, in Hewis, but you could go verify this on your own with a very quick calculation in that software. And in particular, we can notice that the LUMO of pyridine is relatively low in energy. The LUMO of pyridine is lower in energy than the LUMO of benzene. We can trace this to the electron withdrawing effect of the N2 nitrogen atom. Notice also that the lone pair on nitrogen in pyridine is not part of the pi system. This is an N2 nitrogen, and if we return to our picture of the N2 nitrogen, in fact, here it is, in pyridine, this lone pair is not part of the pi system. So it's free to act as a base, and pyridine is a pretty decent base. We'll see it act as a base in reactions later down the line in organic chemistry too. So just to highlight that, let's add that lone pair to our structure of pyridine here and show that it can act as a base. It can be given away because it's not part of the pi system. It's not engaged in electron delocalization. It's a localized lone pair of electrons. One last thing to note here is that the dipole moment of pyridine points kind of as we would expect it to toward the more electronegative nitrogen atom. That's worth pointing out because the next heterocycle we look at, parole, is going to give a very strange looking result when we look at the dipole moment. Parole is a five-membered aromatic heterocycle containing a nitrogen within the ring that is an N3. This nitrogen now is connected via single bonds to three different groups, this H and the two carbons there and there. So parole contains an N3 nitrogen atom, very much different from the N2 in terms of its electron donating and withdrawing properties. Parole is an electron rich ring. And in fact, as we'll see via resonance structures here in a second, it's nucleophilic really at all four carbons. This is a very electron rich heterocycle, but particularly at these carbons adjacent to the nitrogen are quite, quite nucleophilic. Now, this is a molecule that wants to give electrons away at these carbons with an excess of electron density on those carbons. Now, the lone pair on nitrogen is part of the aromatic pi system. And again, if we roll back to our picture of the N3 nitrogen here, that lone pair can and does occupy a p orbital on the N3 nitrogen with only single bonds at the nitrogen. And so that lone pair is part of the pi system, and we can engage it in resonance involving the double bonds nearby. So for example, we could flow electrons like this to generate an alternative resonance form of parole with positive charge on the N3 nitrogen and negative charge on the carbon right here. In fact, we can continue pushing this negative charge along by taking this pair of electrons and sending it into a double bond and pushing these electrons onto this carbon. 
that generates another resonance form that looks like this with negative charge on a different carbon. And in fact, we can keep going because check this out, we have a lone pair adjacent to a double bond. So we can push electrons like so and push the C and double bond electrons onto carbon to generate yet another resonance form with negative charge on another carbon. And we can do this one more time to shift negative charge to the fourth and last remaining carbon of parole. So notice we've generated resonance forms with negative charge on all of the carbons, all four carbons of parole, showing that all four carbons are pretty nucleophilic. Notice also the orbital energies here, in particular the highest occupied molecular orbital of parole. This is at a higher energy than the highest occupied molecular orbital of benzene, indicating that this is an electron-rich ring. This pair of electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital sort of wants to be given away because of its relatively high energy. And finally, check out the dipole moment. The dipole moment of parole is rather bizarre. It points not toward the more electronegative nitrogen atom, but toward the carbons. Wow. Um, and why is this? Carbon is less electronegative than nitrogen, right? So we would expect the dipole moment to point in the opposite direction. But this occurs because of this electron donating effect of the N3 nitrogen. Most of the electron density, as these resonance structures emphasize, is actually down on the carbons, not the nitrogen. This leads to polarization of the molecule toward these carbons and away from the nitrogen atom. So pyridine and parole, although they look similar in a superficial sense because they both contain nitrogens, are very, very different heterocycles. And generally, five- and six-membered heterocycles have very different properties as a result of the different types of bonding patterns, really, of the heteroatoms we find within. So this slide just compares parole and pyridine and summarizes our discussion so far. Parole is an electron-rich ring, and pyridine is an electron-poor ring, and these electron density maps really emphasize this. Look at all this red around the carbons of parole, indicating high electron density. Meanwhile, in pyridine, we're mostly green and blue around those carbons, indicating very low electron density on those carbons. Pyridine has a high-energy HOMO, high-energy, highest-occupied molecular orbital. Pyridine, parole, has a high-energy HOMO. Notice, very high energy electrons right here relative to pyridine and even relative to benzene. By contrast, parole has a low energy LUMO, lowest energy unoccupied molecular orbital, is relatively low in energy relative to benzene and certainly relative to parole. This makes pyridine more electrophilic and parole more nucleophilic. One last thing to point out about pyridine versus parole concerns their basicity properties and how and whether they can act as bases. Remember, in pyridine, the lone pair is not part of the pi system. So where we see this red in the electrostatic potential map, the electron density map, that's the sp2 lone pair that's part of the sigma system, not the pi system. This can be donated, and so that nitrogen in pyridine is a decent Lewis and Bronsted base. By contrast, in parole, that lone pair cannot be donated because it is, or does not really want to be donated because it's part of the pi system. It's already engaged in delocalization, and so it's already pretty stable. This leads to a situation where pyridine can be protonated, and this leads to a conjugate base known as pyridinium that is still aromatic. We've still got a cyclic molecule, fully conjugated, six pi electrons. This is an aromatic structure right here. But if we try to protonate parole, protonation actually occurs not on nitrogen, but on one of those electron-rich carbons. And when this happens via electron flow like this, this creates a tetrahedral center in the ring. So this molecule is necessarily non-aromatic. This makes protonation of parole very, very difficult. This is not a basic molecule at all, which is kind of interesting, right, given that um, it's an electron-rich ring, it still doesn't really want to pick up a proton because this is a non-aromatic molecule right here. So there's a big difference in the basicity properties of pyridine and parole, and we can extrapolate this to N3 and N2 containing heterocycles more broadly. N2 nitrogens tend to be basic, N3 nitrogens not basic at all when they're found in aromatic heterocycles.